Hi, this is Steve, and I'm recording this on Easter Sunday, 2023. The inspiration for this Easter homily was a tweet from a guy I follow on Twitter called Latimer Older, plus my unease at the way Christianity is headed, certainly in the UK, and in where society is headed more generally. So here goes. India has more people than all the West combined. China has more people than all the West combined. Africa has more people than all the West combined. And Latin America has more people than all the West combined. And 90% of those peoples don't give a flying fig about Western preoccupations with isms, ics, phobes, or climate change. So what? Why does this matter? And what's this got to do with Christianity? Well, bear with me, I'll get there. It matters because while the West tears its societies apart and brings in policies which will unquestionably make us poorer, they already are, and therefore more vulnerable both at a nation-state and an individual personal level, these other societies, who do not share our decadent, liberal, introspective preoccupations, let alone some of our fundamental values, will carry on as they please, doing what's best for them, while laughing and pointing at the masochistic death throes of Western liberal democratic culture and thinking we deserve everything we're going through. The China model has already won, although many don't see it yet. So caught up are they in their daily lives and the masochistic moralism wars already alluded to. But what is the China model? Well, it's a simple two-part model. The first, and of primary importance, is the authoritarian and, whenever necessary, murderous control of the masses. Where they can go, who they can associate with, how many children they can have, what they can and can't do, what information they can and can't access, what they can and can't think. The powers that be absolutely certain that what they're doing is necessary, is right. And this, combined with the second part, a global capitalist economy based on virtual slave labour, pouring cheap products into the West and buying influence around the world, which has created a gigantic middle class where once the vast majority were dirt poor. Dirt poor equals unhappy and therefore ripe for rebellion, of course, hence the need for authoritarian ruthlessness. Middle class equals so much more economically better off than our grandparents and even parents that it blinds us to our lack of true individual freedom, to our de facto slavery. To paraphrase Aldous Huxley, we will be slaves and we'll be happy about it. And in our own liberal democracies, we see this via the various policies brought in on the back of a supposed accepted certainty certainty of the moral virtue of those policies. We'll grow poorer and less free by degrees, or rather the majority will, and tell ourselves we're happy about it, because we're being oh so moral and virtuous. Suffering with moral virtue, all very Christian. And our governments, with their co-opted acolytes in the media, judiciary, police, large corporations, Christian denomination hierarchies, etc. You know, the ones who won't bear the brunt of the changes are essentially following the same game plan as the Chinese Communist Party, the CCP. Constant propaganda pushing existential threats from outside. For the CCP, it's the evil imperialist West and deadly viruses. For the West, it's climate change and deadly viruses. Threats of such magnitude, so we're told, that only the state or even unelected global quangos like the World Health Organization or United Nations can possibly save us. 
and so we gratefully tag along, doing as we're told like eager to please puppies, and are happy about the freedoms and economic devastation the imposed policies cause, because they're oh so necessary, oh so moral. By the time the relatively wealthy, apathetic, virtue-signalling upper-middle classes realise that these policies will screw their lives up as well, it will be too late to do anything about it. Our levels of immigration and the trans-religion takeover of most influential parts of our culture are obvious examples and become more obvious almost daily. Then there's tight control of information via the media and the ridiculing, silencing or deplatforming of dissenters keeps the majority looking to the CCP or, in our case, the government or the World Health Organization, etc., for supposed salvation. The science is settled. The facts are settled. The need for, and therefore the morality and righteousness of, our policies and goals is settled. Total certainty, total belief in our righteousness, and, as Machiavelli correctly pointed out, the ends do indeed justify the means. Always, and however harsh those means may seem, to the unintelligent bigot or the unenlightened neutral observer. Of course, being absolutely certain about our righteousness while we destroy ourselves is, as I've said, a very Christian morality, isn't it? Even if atheists and agnostics don't realise it or refuse to acknowledge it. After all, what was Christ's sacrifice if not an absolute certainty that allowing himself to suffer a drawn-out and agonising death was not only right, but necessary, that it would work out all right in the end, however long, in human terms, that end may take to come, and however much suffering would be involved in the meantime. However, while some of us may fervently believe or hope that this sacred certainty will be fulfilled when we die, I'm afraid I'm equally certain that the supposed necessary sacrifices that we are being constantly propagandised we must make in this secular, earthbound, mortal life will make no difference globally, for the simple reason, as Konstantin Kissin pointed out in a recent Oxford Union speech, that two-thirds of the world's population simply don't care, either for ideological reasons, like the Chinese Communist Party, or because they're so poor that caring about our liberal, democratic, navel-gazing, self-flagellating preoccupations is something they can neither afford to do, nor are prepared to do. And we know whose side Jesus was on, don't we? We know what group his preoccupation was with, don't we? Oh yes, that's right. The poor. Thanks for listening, and Happy Easter.